everyone, how's it going? It's Jesse from Bear Flower Farm. And if you're new to my channel, I am a first year cut flower farmer growing in zone 6B in New Jersey. Now I had actually originally wanted to make a video talking about me selling my ranunculus uh, bouquets at the farmer's market tomorrow, but I got COVID. So I'm not gonna be at the market tomorrow. Um, I, I'm feeling a lot better right now. Yesterday I felt like I got hit by a truck um, and I know it's been going around. So hopefully everyone out there is staying safe um, and I sure as heck don't wanna spread it. So we're gonna be sitting this one out. Um, it was it was kind of disappointing because it's like the first time where I feel like I really have like awesome, awesome blooms that are not tulips. Um, and obviously I won't be able to sell these, but, um, we're going to be giving them to neighbors. So I've already given a few bouquets away. Um, and I still have a couple left before we give them away. So, um, I was actually going to focus the video more around just me, um, uh, me showing you like how like how I paired the ranunculus in bouquets and then the pricing selling of it but I also wanted to talk about my experience growing in crates with ranunculus so that's actually what I'm going to focus on uh, for today's video now I was not anticipating on growing ranunculus at all um and it wasn't until I was shopping for tulip bulbs on clearance in December which you're really not supposed to do by the way. Um, but I was shopping for tulip bulbs on clearance when I also saw, saw that ranunculus corms were on clearance and I got a pack for $4.98 for 30 corms. So I was like, all right, like let's add two packs into the cart, even though I had nowhere to put them because I was still living in my townhouse at the time. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So in my head, I was thinking like some may not pre-sprout, some corms might be really, really small. Let's just see how it goes. I'll buy two packs. I'll get 60 and then I'll figure it out later. Well, guess what? All of them pre-sprouted. Um, like 95% of the corms were a decent size. And then I was left scrambling for space. So because we were in the townhouse, we had very limited space. Growing our own food is quite important for us. I was actually overwintering some garlic as well as like kale and chard. I really didn't have that much space. So I looked around and I saw that I had a bulb crate. And I know a lot of people grow tulips in bulb crates. So that's when I thought, why don't I try growing ranunculus in bulb crates? And I'll be honest, like I look for resources on this. I really couldn't find that much information. But just thinking about, you know, for a tulip, um, I know that a lot of the flower, like, like the flowering process, it gets its nutrients and stuff from the bulb. So it's not like it needs a lot of fertilizer. It's not like it needs a lot of space. Now, the one difference with a ranunculus corm versus a tulip bulb is that ranunculus corms do have longer roots. So um, you just needed to make sure that it had space um, and making sure that the that if you use paper to line the, the crate, it was permeable for the, the roots to be able to breathe. So once I kind of thought, thought it through, I was like, all right, let's go ahead. And I first put 13 pre-sprouted corms into a crate on January 18th. It just so happens that I was following a local farmer on Instagram and on their story, they showed that they were cramming 25 corms into a crate. And I was like, all right, if you're able to do 25, like let me add some more. And so I added 23 in there. And then I put, I would say it was another like 20 in pots or so, like um, like my, my smart pots. So overall, um, I had about 40 something. So I, I honestly don't even know what happened to the other 20, but all I know is that I ended up with like 40 corms. Um, and at that time, only 23 realistically felt like it fell into the crate, uh, it fit into the crate. So that was in um, mid-January, mid I, I pre-sprouted the corms, January 18th to be specific, and February 16th, they went into the crate. Between February 16th and now, um, I baby the heck out of these corms, meaning I would bring the crate outside during the day. Um, most of the days, it was like high 30s, low 40s, and then at night, it was too cold, so I'd bring them inside when we were having like wind or whatever, I would put some plastic cover over it, bring them inside. And there were some days where there was a lot of snow. So I actually brought the full bulb crate into my grow room and put lights over it. And what that meant was I got a lot of really good foliage growing and no bulbs until April 16th. So on April 16th, I saw my very first bud. I was super excited. What I didn't realize was that that bud was gonna take another like three weeks for me to be able to pick it. 
And at that time, that was really like the only bud. I saw like two other buds, but they all took around three weeks for it to really just shoot up and be at a stage that was harvestable. So even though they say corms when started take 90 days after to bloom, my experience is really more like 110 days. Um, so like a full two, three weeks after um, what I was expecting. And that meant that initially I was thinking, oh, like I should definitely have blooms um, from my ranunculus to sell at my May 1st and my May, um, May 15th market, and I didn't. So this really was the only market that I was gonna be able to have ranunculus to sell. And out of those 23 corms, I got about 30 stems off of them, 30 usable stems, because what I found was that there were a few stems, especially that were in the orange and yellow colors that would just start flopping over after a while. Um, I actually have an example right over here. So you can see with this, with this stem, um, the head looks or the bud looks amazing, right? But then it just flopped like this. And what's really weird is that it's not like it flopped like this, um, like during the first day, it took maybe about like four or five days for it to get to the stage. So um, I'm doing a market every other week, which means that I really need to plan my stems. And unfortunately, of course, um, some of the ranunculus was in prime picking mode about a week or 10 days before my next market. So I picked these really, really, really early um, in that like peony stage, like even pre-marshmallow. Um, and they actually held out really, really well um, in my root cellar at 55 degrees. And um, they didn't really start opening until I would say like about five days later. So they started getting to um, this kind of stage let me show you over here. This kind of stage um, about four, uh, so today's Saturday, about three days ago. So I know that they're still gonna have good bays life here. And the way that I was holding these for that, um, that period of 10 days to seven days was I put them in just water. Um, and then I even put in a CVBN tablet because I read that the flopping might actually be due to um, bacteria issues. So I put a CVB in tablet, which is basically like a slow release chlorine type of tablet that you put in for any kind of stem that has a lot of fuzzies. Um, they call them dirty stems. So I put that in um, and it really didn't seem to make a difference. But then I would say three days before um, I was planning on making bouquets, I put some flower food in there and flower food has a bit of carbohydrates. So that allows the flower food to have some sugar um, it helps the blooms open. It also helps the blooms have a bit more of a vibrant color. Sorry for all the background noise. People are doing work in the house. So I know there's a sink running right now. But anyway, so um, I got about 30 harvestable stems off of the 23 corms, which really isn't that much. And then I mentioned that I had about another 20 corms out in pots. Those were corms that I did not at all baby. They actually um, braved the elements and they still shot up a few buds, but they were significantly inferior to the buds that I got over here. They were a lot smaller. So actually this is a good example over here. You can see that this, this bud over here um, doesn't have as many layers. This was actually from a corm that went out into a smart pot and I never brought it in or out. And I think this plant actually got pretty stressed out versus when you look at something like this one, this one's got a lot more ruffled layers and it just, um, this one produced a lot better and this one came from the crate. So that brings me to another topic, which is the pricing of your stems. And I felt like I had a reality meets theoretical moment here because when I looked at that plate, uh, that crate, when I first started, I was thinking, man, this crate is money. When you look at the wholesale sell sheets, especially off of like Boston Ornamental Terminal, each ranunculus stem fetches north of $2 a stem. So I was like, man, like this is gonna be awesome. Well, guess what? I noticed that in the beginning, my stems were quite awesome. So in other words, you know, I got about 18 inches off of a bouquet like this. Um, even after cutting, I'm still at a good like 15 inches. Um, they were full heads, they, they, they looked really great. Now, as the weather started getting warmer and the nighttime temperatures were getting into the mid 50s, I noticed that the stems were getting significantly shorter. So enter this bouquet here, which, you know, for the most part is still okay in terms of stem size. But when I harvested these, these were already at 
15 inches. Um, and you can see like these buds are de definitely just a little bit smaller. Um, this is actually a good example of a bud that I tried um, harvesting at or even before the stage. But this bud is a more recent bud and it is definitely a lot smaller than the buds that I harvested within the first week or so. So, you know, at the end of the day, growing in crates, the advantage is that you can actually move it um, to another location if it gets too hot. So for example, last weekend, it was really, really hot. We got to like the mid nineties. I was actually able to move the crate into um, the indoors where it was cooler, but honestly, like the damage was already done then in the sense that the nighttime, nighttime temperatures are just too cool or sorry, too warm for the ranunculus to really thrive. And it got to the point where I could see that buds that were coming up, there was a lot of pest pressure. Um, there were a lot of aphids on there. There were ants, um, you know, trying to like eat those aphids. So it was, it was one of those things where I really got like two, two, maybe two and a half weeks of blooms off of them realistically. And I think back to an article that I read uh, written by Jenny Love. So Jenny Love is um, one of the more famous flower f farmers. She's out in Philadelphia. So she's not too far away from me. She's about an hour and a half away. And she made this comment saying that, hey, I used to grow ranunculus in the spring, but it's just not worth it. Um, there's so much labor involved and I don't get enough of bloom time for it to be worth my effort. So that's why she always um, overwinters and plants in the fall and uses caterpillar tunnels. And that's exactly what I want to do next year because even though it sounds like I got a good deal off of the corms, um, getting 60 corms for $10, the amount of labor I spent on these guys definitely adds up to more than that. So even if I were to sell this at the market, now I mentioned that um, you know each ranunculus stem hypothetically, when they're large and they're long, you can get north of $2. These are not $2 worth. Um, and this is another um, reason um, outside of the quality of ranunculus, but why you should be thinking about foliage in the spring is because a bouquet like this actually has the right number of focal flowers but it doesn't have enough greenery to make it feel full and lush to be a $20 bouquet. So I was gonna sell these for $15 at the market and that would have netted me about $75 um, before everything. So, you know, I, I, I kept one of the bouquets and put them into a, a vase for myself so you can kind of see how it looks. If there was a little bit more green, it would definitely fill out more. So for me next year, I am going to um, put up those caterpillar tunnels. Um, I ordered close to 2000 corms for next year. And the reason for that being, if you wanna get individual corms, or not individual, but if you wanna get like 25 packs or 50 packs, the price of a corm has really, really gone up. And it really only makes sense in my view to buy them wholesale. So at a reasonable price at the wholesale mark, um, I had to buy 500 and I obviously didn't just wanna grow one color of one variety. So I got a mix um, of various types and the intention is to basically give away some corms to the friends, but also sell some. And I will probably keep, I would say maybe about like a third of the 2000 that I got for my own production. Um, and I will still continue to grow some in crates just for that insurance. But you know, the lesson learned here was that getting two, three weeks of blooms for ranunculus is not worth it given all the headache and the stress. Um, and I'm sure some of you guys feel that way too because I've been seeing in Facebook groups where the Pacific Northwest is super, super wet, but other parts of the US, it's like we went from spring to summer and it always feels that way. But this year, like I'm pretty sure it was worse because I don't remember hitting multiple 90, mid 90 days, mid 90 degree weather days um, in the Northeast like we did this year. So, um, you know, just, just going back a little bit more to just how I put together these bouquets with what I had, um, I thought that ranunculus paired really well with the Snapdragon that was coming. So you can see that there's two stems of Snapdragon here. This is a Costa Snapdragon and this is a um, legend series. Um, it's a pink legends, uh, snapdragon and these snapdragon were actually also picked at a very, very early stage. Um, I picked them before that hot weather set in and that was a full week before my market. So they were picked, um, quite closed. And I, again, put a CVB and tablet 
in for storage for the majority of the time and then um, two days ago I lifted them and put them into a normal um, uh, had flower food solution and they opened up really really nicely so um, for me it's always like if, if I don't have a cooler how can I still extend storage and that's what I'm really trying to experiment around with so I was super happy with um, you know how these snapdragon turned out um, in any case, I'm hoping that next time when I make a video about the market, I will have a lot more blooms because I already see buds on my sunflowers. Um, again, I pushed the envelopes, uh, envelope on those. I actually um, put them out before frost and cover them and that worked quite well. So hopefully I will have some sunflowers and maybe even stock. So um, stay tuned for next time. But in the meantime, I would love to hear about your experiences growing ranunculus. And if you know the reason for why I'm getting these floppy heads here, please leave that in the comments for me below. I will see you next time.